Hello everyone. Today I want to do a little tutorial video on how to play triplet ornaments in Celtic music on the keyboard. Now this may not be the best way to do it, but it's my way. So if you like the way I play, you've, you know, you've probably listened to some of my other videos. If not, check them out in my channel. If you like the way I play Celtic folk music, I just want to show you how I do those ornaments. Quite a few of you have asked me how I do the fingering, how you where exactly can you add those ornaments in the tune? So I wanted to do a quick video. Now, if you enjoy these little tutorials, if you enjoy the kind of music I play, and if you feel generous and you'd like to support me, I would very much appreciate it. You can do that through Patreon. You could become a monthly subscriber, or you could just make a one-time donation through PayPal. All of the links are going to be down below. Again, if you'd like to say thank you, with your wallet, there's links down below. I would very much appreciate it. So here's the tutorial. So I'm going to be using two different tunes in order to show the types of ornaments that I do and the fingering. One of them is Morrison's Jig and the other one is Dini O'Brien's. It's a reel. Both are Irish tunes. One's a jig, the other one's a reel. I wanted to show you the triplet ornament in both contexts. So and there's some kind of um, peculiar things I do in both pieces. There's different ways to do it. So let's start with the jig first, Morrison's jig. So right off the bat, from the beginning, it starts with a triplet ornament. It's this. Okay, it, it's right there in the beginning. There's actually two types of triplets that I play. I play it in two different ways. Here's the first one. Start on E, that one. If you number the fingers, one, two, three, four, five. What I do is three, two, one, three, two, one. Middle, index, thumb. That's the triplet. Maybe we should back up a little bit. What's a triplet? It's a rhythmical figure in music. You play three in the space of one. So if you're in two, four, for example, if you're going one, two, three, four, instead of just playing straight quarter notes, you're gonna play. See, instead of one, you play three. That's all it is, really. So in the beginning of Morrison's jig, it starts with, uh, I'll play it without the ornament first, so it's... Okay, so the very beginning, this note here. See? The second one of those, I put the triplet in, so it sounds like this. And see? So what is it? It's the upbeat. It goes... Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so it's on the upbeat in jigs that this works really well. Here's how I do it again. It's so you start with the thumb and then you go three, two, one with your fingers, right? At the end of this video, I'm going to give you a couple of exercises that might be very, very helpful in developing this technique. And I'll give you some of my insights about how I sort of figured out how to do these things technically. I really struggled with this ornament, to be honest, when I started first playing Celtic music on the accordion. I, this is one that really stumped me. The little, the grace notes and the turns and the twists, those I, I integrated into my playing easier because I come from Eastern Europe and I come from uh, playing Eastern European folk music on the accordion, which is full of ornaments and grace notes. But this type, the triplet, doesn't exist in Eastern European music, so I wasn't really used to it. So, okay, back to Morrison's jig, okay? So the beginning. That's the opening. There's a wrong note, ignore that. Uh, so here it is. Now, this type of triplet you can do if you start with the thumb. So if your thumb is here, okay, it's very easy to go 
three, two, one. Okay, that's easy to do because it's free. No problem. But so that's the first way I do triplet ornaments. There's another way that I've I don't want to say I've discovered on my own, but but I've well maybe I have, I don't know, but I've I've heard uh Irish button players do that kind of an ornament because uh, you know on that type of instrument if you open or close the bellows it produces two different notes so I guess they have to work with that or against it I guess so mm. but I haven't heard an, uh, a keyboard accordion player use that kind of an ornament so I'll show you so here's the second type of triplet you can do the first type again is when you start with the thumb then it's easy I'll, I'll play the whole thing so you can hear it afterwards but now, what if you end up on finger number two with your index finger? And from here, you want to start a triplet. What do you do then? Again, if you're with the thumb, easy. What do you do there? I've seen videos of some of the, some of my accordion idols, of course. Uh, Phil Cunningham, Gary Blair. Hi, hi Gary. <laughs> uh, I've seen videos of them doing ornaments, doing the triplet ornament starting here and then doing so we start with two then doing three two one i find that one hard to do maybe i just need to sit down and practice it but that's not one i use i don't use that one what i do here's my little trick okay secret <laughs> if i'm on here the way i do the triplet is instead of playing those three notes, pum pum pum, going, instead of doing that, the first one, I switch it. So instead of going for the triplet, I go, and see, it has this little, um, what would you say, like a bit of a sharpness to it, like a bit of a bite to it at the beginning because of this minor third. You can use any interval you want. You could, you could do this. But I use this. Again, let's break that down a little bit. So, whoops. So if you want to do a triplet on any key, on any white key, starting with the second finger, what I do, you can do whatever you want, but what I do is a triplet has three notes, okay? So instead of playing all three the same note, the first one of those, I substitute for a third up. So instead of going, I'm going to go, and in terms of fingering, what, what I do is four, two, one. So that's a triplet. It's kind of cheating, I guess, because a triplet ornament, by definition, is the same note three times. But I, I get away with this. T has the little bite at the beginning of it. So, so again, it's... And I actually do use it in Morrison's jig, so I'll play Morrison's jig again. I'll do it slowly. And in the very first, in the A section, I use both types of triplets because of my fingering. So watch, here it is. So starting normal, slowly with the ornaments, okay? Here it is. Here. Now I've ended up with finger two. What am I going to do? Easy. Here we go. So again, again, here it is again on the G. It 
it works nicely there, that ornament, yeah? Now you could do... Because you start on the two, right? Because the previous phrase is... Is what I do. That's what I do. You could do... It's harder and I find it more awkward to play. Instead I do mine, which is... So here it is, the first phrase, the, the A section of Morrison's Jig. So that's where I would put it in a jig, okay? It always, at least the way I use it, the triplet ornament, either one, I always place it on the upbeat never on a downbeat in a jig rhythm so if jig rhythm is it's in six eight it goes one two one two okay so it's always on the it's on the little upbeat that's where i put the trip okay so it's That's a jig. Okay, let's look at a reel now. A reel is different rhythmically, right? Because a jig is in six eight. It's in, it's in what's called compound. It's in what's called compound uh, meter. Here's a reel. Dini O'Brien's is the one I, I I wanted to show you because there's a little spot there. I use that ornament that really fits well. Here it is. <laughs> Do you see it? It's right there. So the melody. Okay, it's right down here. I, I guess you could do a normal triplet. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. But I put instead a Costa triplet, <laughs> which is the one with the third above, right? So going four. I use the C sharp because that's the key we're in. Key of A major, right? So I use the C sharp going four, two, uh, four, two, one, four, two, one. Here it is. Because of my fingering, I end up on the A with my second finger, right? So then I do a Costa triplet. <laughs> Four, two, one. Here it is again. Never mind that one. Cut. Gives it that little bite, particularly on the celestial violin register. I quite like it. Here's the B section of the same tune of Dini O'Brien's. There I use the regular triplet, 3 2 1, as opposed to 4 2 1. Here it is. In the beginning, this this two. Now watch, I've ended up with the thumb here. Now I need to do a triplet. Well, what am I going to do? The Costa triplet <laughs> or the regular one? I could do both. I could do mine or I could do three, two, one. Both work, right? So it's up to you. I use the regular one. So there's that example. Here's the whole thing. And the B 
section. Okay. Two types. Question. Where would you put the triplet ornaments in a reel? To recap, in the jig, you put them where? On the upbeats, right? Never on a downbeat. Maybe you can, but I haven't figured out how to do it. In a reel, you could do it both on a downbeat and an upbeat. I don't know, I'm just making it up, but you can do it. Uh, both on a downbeat and an upbeat in a reel. In this tune, well, let's see. The first one that I do, the Costa one, is it on a downbeat or an upbeat? I'll play it and you think about that. Here it is. One, two, three, and. What was it? Up or down? Here it is again. Up. That was an upbeat. Here's the B section. And think about this. Is it, is it on a downbeat or an upbeat? Here it is. Upbeats. Both are upbeats. So, here it is. That's how I do them. Okay? Uh, but you could just as easily do it on a downbeat in the reel. What? I'm just making something up, but you can you can do it. Rhythmically works. Here's a little trick that I've discovered, literally in the last couple months. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you uh, when you play the triplet. Let's let's go like here on the C. What's helped me is if I put a bit of space between the main note and the triplet that follows. What do I mean? So it's the first main note, then you play. I've discovered that if I put a tiny bit of a gap before the triplet, it allows it to be very crisp and well articulated. I sort of notice that. Uh, first I'm going to try playing it without the little gap, just so you can hear what it sounds like. To me it kind of sounds more messy that way, right? See, it's not as clean as this. Now I'm going to put a bit of a gap. Same with the Costa triplet, the 421 triplet. Tiny bit of a gap, <clears throat> excuse me, tiny bit of a gap really helps. Okay, so that's one little trick <clears throat> that I hope helps you as well. <clears throat> excuse me. That's about it, about the triplet. Um, you might ask, how do I do them in a, uh, in a slip jig, which is 9-8? The same principle as the regular jig applies, because it's, it's in compound time, okay? It's going to work the same way. Just something I made up in 9-8. It's going to work the same way. Okay, so there it is. Let's leave it there. Uh, if this has been helpful to you, please let me know. I would love to hear some feedback from you. If I fumble through something and you haven't understood, then please let me know. I'll be happy to help more. Uh, and that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. Again, your support would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.